Greetings gastronauts, this is Keith Cooks, I'm Keith and today I'm going to do another Filipino dish, oh yes, I'm going to make beef caldereta. So about a month ago I made what is probably the Philippine national dish, adobo, and that went down very well. And I've got a couple of requests for more Filipino stuff, so from John Colesar, or Colesar, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, sorry. Uh, I think he's Welsh, but also I think he lives in the Philippines. He requested beef caldereta and also Elmar H who suggested two or three other Philippines dishes, including this one. So the name of this derives from the Spanish caldera, which is, uh, well, cauldron, or actually in modern day Spanish it's a boiler. <laughs> um, and uh, so it's like it's got a very distinct Mediterranean influence because it includes olives and bell peppers which you wouldn't get in a Yorkshire stew, I can assure you. Anyway, I'm sure it'll be delicious. If you enjoy this video, give it a like, share, subscribe, etc. Beef Calderetta. Right, before we start cooking, we need to marinate the beef. So I've got 450 grams of diced stewing beef. And there's, there's a bit of fat on that, which is absolutely fine. Um, so for the marinade, I've got a clove of garlic. I'll just choppy-fy that. Pearl wet in a bowl. Then we'll add a couple of tablespoons of dark soy sauce. And a couple of tablespoons of vinegar. This is cider vinegar. You could use white wine vinegar or just plain ordinary white vinegar. And then just throw the beef in there and stir it to get it coated. And you want to marinate that for an hour or two before you start cooking. Okay, ingredients for the calderetta. I've got two medium potatoes, uh, three little carrots, an onion, a red bell pepper, a green bell pepper, half a cup of garden peas, and 750 ml of beef stock made from a cube. I've also got salt and pepper to taste, a can of chopped tomatoes, a tablespoon of tomato puree, a teaspoon of fish sauce, and two or three bay leaves, a couple of cl cloves of garlic, a teaspoon, actually half a teaspoon of chili flakes because I don't like it too hot, and um, two teaspoons of brown sugar. I think that's everything. Oh, some olives. Some green olives, these need to be pitted. I didn't get pitted ones because I'm an idiot and I like to make a lot of work for myself, so there you go. So we put these aside, they will be added to the stew towards the end, otherwise they'll be dramatically overcooked and we don't want that but we don't so we do want the uh, onion and other things at this point we need to peel and dice the onion you know the drill and there's one key ingredient that I completely forgot to mention because it was in the fridge um, but it is vital, I think, to uh, this calderetta. It's liver spread or liver paste, or in my case, I've got liver pate. This is smooth Brussels pate, and there's 100 grams there, and that will add richness and creaminess to the stew. And it's a very unusual thing. I've never seen that done before, so I'm looking forward to tasting how that works. Need to peel and mince or finely chop your garlic I love this machine <laughs> and set that aside till you need it we're going to cook the meat and the onion first so heat a good amount of oil in a heavy bottom pan and then add the beef, um, strain the liquid marinade off it, but keep the marinade because we'll need that later. And just put the beef in, in a single layer. If, if there's too much to get, get it all in at one go, uh, you'll need to do it in batches. So stir it now and again, get the meat browned all over. If you are doing it in batches, take the first batch out, put the next one in, cook that. Then keep on going until you brown all the meat and then add the onions and brown those. When you've cooked the beef and onions and add the chopped garlic with the rest of the marinade and cook that for a minute. 
then add the tomato puree and cook that for three or four minutes. Now we can add the can of tomatoes, fish sauce and the red chilli flakes. Cover the pan and cook gently for five minutes. Then add the beef stock, the brown sugar, the bay leaves and the liver spread. So break up the liver spread or pate or whatever. Mix well and bring it to the boil. Now we need to cook it until the beef is tender and you've got actually three options for doing this. You can do the conventional way of cooking it in a, in a big pot or a Dutch oven on the stove top and that will take an, an hour and a half to two hours. Or you can do it quickly in a pressure cooker and that will take 20 to 30 minutes. Or you can do it very slowly in a slow cooker or crock pot and that will take about six hours. It's up to you but I'm going to use my pressure cooker because I'm running out of time as always. So I'll just transfer all of that into there. Ugh. Could make an almighty mess of this. Or not. Bring it to the boil again, put the lid on, bring it up to pressure, and I think I'll give it 25 minutes. Now, while the meat is cooking, I'm going to peel my potatoes and dice them. And we're not quite ready for them yet, so I'll put them in a bowl of cold water to stop them going brown. And I want to peel the carrots. And dice them. The old fashioned way. And if your olives have got stones in, you need to get them out. And I was hoping that I could figure out an easy way <laughs> to do that, but I really haven't. The, uh, th these are out of the jar, they're not anything like a fresh olive, and they're just really. Oh, the only easy way to pit these is to buy them ready done. Okay, I've depressurized the pressure cooker, so we'll transfer it back into this pot. You wouldn't do this if you weren't making a video. Well, bay leaf there. We can take that out because it's done its work. Let's have a little taste. That beef's definitely nice and tender. Mmm, lush, as they say. Oh, and spicy with the chilli. Mm -hmm. So now we can put the taties and the carrots and the olives in. That can go back on the stove on low for about 15 minutes until the potatoes and carrots are tender. Okay, almost done. So now we just want to deal with the bell peppers, the capsicums, and just slice them. And these can go in the stew along with the peas and cook for about five minutes and then I reckon we're done. Taste it for seasoning and add salt and pepper if you think it needs it. All right, finally, we have caldereta. And I've had a sneaky taste. It is marvelous. So I don't, that seemed to take hours and hours and hours, but you know, I was making a video and uh, uh, messed about with other things, so. Mm. Nice bit of red pepper. Um, still got a bit of crunch to it, which is, I think, the way it should be. Bit of beef. Mmm. Oh, that's good. It's all delicious. But I can detect the, uh, the liver pate, the paste. It's in there. It really is doing its job. Well, what can I say? It is delicious. So that is beef caldereta from the Philippines. Uh, you can also do it with chicken or pork if you wish. And um, I love it. It's brilliant. So 
thanks for watching and see you next time.